What's up guys, David are one, two, and two, and it's teaching day. Ah uh, yes, teaching day. Today we're gonna continue our series of our 101 intros to Yu-Gi-Oh! Like in the last video where I discussed the just bare bones top level what it takes in order to understand the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! We are going to take another top level look at what a typical turn in Yu-Gi-Oh! actually looks like. Because before you know what the different types of cards really mean and like how to use them in a winning strategy and building a deck, you need to know when you can properly use various cards and things like that and how a turn progresses so that you have some idea just of the basic structure of a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Turns in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! are like turns in any other game. In Yu-Gi-Oh! you have two players. Each player takes turns taking a, a turn. Turns in Yu-Gi-Oh! are split up into different parts we call phases. And it's these phases that determine what actions happen where when playing a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Each phase has a certain set of rules, as well as a certain set of game actions and allowed cards to be used, which differ from phase to phase. During each turn in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh!, one player is considered the turn player. Turn player is the player whose turn it is. Seems pretty simple. Turn player has the ability to determine the flow of a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Turn player decides when one phase ends and another begins. And when that turn player ends his turn, turn player is passed to his opponent. All right, now let's progress through the phases of a turn. I feel like I'm gonna say the word turn about a thousand times this episode. The first phase in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is called the draw phase. In this phase, the turn player takes one card off the top of their main deck of cards and adds it to their hand. This is obviously called drawing, and this game action is specifically called their normal draw. Most of the time, a typical draw phase pretty much is only this. The turn player draws their card for turn. However, and this is gonna be true for every single phase of the turn, both players are allowed to use quick play spells, trap cards, and general quick effects. All three of those things we'll go over in a separate video. But suffice it to say, those three types of things can be used during the draw phase. Whenever I tell you uh, something can be used and it might not be clear as to why one would want to, just write it off as strategy would dictate it as the good move. Don't worry about why right now. Because most of this stuff is going to be strategy is why you would do it when you would do it. But you can do it. You know what I mean. There is also some cards that can only be used during the draw phase, something like drop off here. But the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is not so cryptic. The card will tell you if it has some sort of strange restriction or activation condition like that. All right, turn player has now ended their draw phase. They move on to the next phase of the game, the standby phase. The standby phase is an upkeep phase. Most of the time during this phase, you will be using card effects that say they specifically activate during the standby phase. And a lot of these will be cards that say you have to pay some kind of amount of life points to keep the card on the field. Something like Imperial Order here. Players affectionately called this a maintenance cost simply because it is something you pay during the standby phase in order to keep a card live that is a, a maintaining the card, a maintenance cost. That is typically the kind of thing you will see during the standby phase. You will also see this phase used to count turns. Something like Swords of Concealing Light stays on the field until the second standby phase in which it's used, so, or destroyed after the second, I don't remember, I'll, uh, destroys it during, you destroy it during your second standby phase. Okay, so it's the second standby phase this card sees. A lot of cards that are counting turns until something happens will use the standby phase for that function. Again, this is just an upkeep phase that happens before a majority of the gameplay happens. However, those same three things, quick play spells, trap cards, and quick effects can be used during the standby phase. Why would you want to? Strategy. Again, and that is both players. So turn players decided to end their standby phase and now we enter the main phase of the game. The main phase of the game is exactly what it sounds like, the main phase of the game in which most game actions happen. In tournament play, it is good juju in order to declare your phases ending and beginning so the opponent knows exactly the flow of the game, but in a casual game, this is kind of where you'll just end up after you draw a card. In this phase, you can summon monsters, set trap cards, and play any kind of spell cards you want. Because you are turn player in the main phase, most of the time you are committing the first game action. Your opponent is then given the opportunity to respond. Your opponent can still only respond with that quick play, trap, or quick effects, but you can pretty much use anything you want because it's your main phase. The bulk of the game actions you'll be doing during this phase, however, is summoning monsters to the field. Summon is the game term for when a monster is played to the field from any location, typically the hand. During a main phase, a player gets one normal summon, one pendulum summon, but that is normally only reserved for a pendulum deck. If you don't know that's what you're playing, then you're not playing it. You, you will know, later video. 
and any amount of special summons that they can properly accrue the right amount of resources in game state in order to allow said special summon to happen. Most of the time, it's either by some card effect or you've gotten some sort of field condition that allows you to make said special summon. Again, that is a later video, but as long as you can do it, legally, you can do as many as you want. The normal summon of a monster is probably the most important part about summoning monsters during your main phase. Turn player is allowed to do this once and only once during their turn and can just put a monster on the field for free from their hand as long as it is of levels 4 or lower. If it is levels 5 or higher, it requires a tribute of 1 or 2, depending if it's 5 or 6 for 1, levels 7 or higher for 2. Tributing is when you send existing monsters to the field to the graveyard in order to place a monster on board. Again, later video. If you do not wish to use your one normal summon, you can exchange it for one normal set. It counts as the same thing, but you are placing the monster face down in defense position instead of face up attack position. This still counts as your normal summon for the turn, but it is called a normal set because you are setting a card face down. Here is where turn player can also set trap cards to the field. The reason why you'd want to do this is because trap cards need to be set before you activate them and can only be activated at the start of the next turn. And that is the main phase, the phase in which you're going to be playing most of your cards, the most important phase of the turn. I know I gave you kind of a lot of information, but like I said, it is the bulk of a turn. Now here is where we are going to get into something a bit interesting. The divergence of the turn. At the end of your main phase, you have two options, to proceed to the next phase, the battle phase, or to simply end your turn. You do not need to enter the battle phase if you do not wish to. If you choose to skip your battle phase, proceed to the end phase portion of the video. The next phase is the battle phase. In the battle phase, exactly what it sounds like is what's happening. Your monsters are battling. To simplify 15 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame, the reason why you put monsters on the field is for them to fight. Most, mostly. And this is the phase in which you do so. During the battle phase, each face-up monster can attack once, and once this turn. Unless, obviously, something tells you otherwise. That monster can attack either your opponent's monsters, or if they have no monsters, can attack their life points directly. As you know in the previous video, this is how you win a game. You lower your opponent's life points to zero, and during the battle phase, the damage done by your battles is primarily how you reduce your opponent's life points. And your monster's attack points are deducted from their life points, and if you attack one of their monsters, instead of their life points directly, their monster's attack points are deducted from your attack points, and they take life points damage equal the difference. Their monsters are soaking up some of the fight. Unless, of course, their monsters are in defense mode. But again, another video. When an attack is declared, there is an entire specific subset of steps, like little mini phases within the battle phase that determine how a battle actually occurs. The whole defense mode, attack mode, battle, damage, damage, calc, battle step stuff, we'll all do in another later video, because that, that could be an entire later video. What, what happens when one actually declares an attack? It, it's actually kind of complicated. But for our purposes, it's boop, cool. What's next? Once you've declared an attack with all the monsters you wish to, you may now, if you choose, end your battle phase. As with the other phases, both players may use quick play spells, trap cards, and quick effects at any time during this battle phase, so even though you may not have any monsters in face-up attack position, or you may have attacked with all the ones that you do, your battle phase is not necessarily over until you say it is, because you can still do a couple more things if you have those options. Quick note, you can also enter your battle phase even if you have no monsters. You are allowed to do that. Seems weird, but again, strategy. Okay, so turn player has ended their battle phase. They now enter their main phase two. Main phase two is exactly the same as main phase one. You can normal summon, special summon, set trap cards, and play spells to the field. If you have previously normal or tribute summoned or normal set or tribute set during your main phase one, you can't do it again in main phase two. You get one per turn, even though you have two main phases. If you didn't use your normal summon during your main phase 1, you can do it now. But other than that, the main phase 2 proceeds exactly like your main phase 1. It is just simply where you will play a bunch of cards. The reason why you'd want a second main phase is traditionally in order to mount a defense against what your opponent is going to be doing on their turn once you end. Or you might have gone into your battle phase, attacked into something that has made your day much worse than you thought it was going to be, and now you need to some mitigate some sort of problem that you created by your own misstep. 
a lot of problem solving and preparation happen during the main phase too. Once you have decided that your main phase 2 is ended, you now enter your end phase. Ah uh, yes, the end phase, another upkeep phase. Had you ended your turn after your main phase 1 and decided not to enter a battle phase, you'd end up here automatically. But if you did go to a battle phase in main phase 2, you end up here anyway, but there are a few more steps happened in between. Like every other phase in the game, certain cards like Melfi Caddy here only use their effects during the end phase of a turn. But predominantly, this is another phase where you'll be paying some sort of maintenance cost or counting turns on some face-up card that is counting turns. Again, it's just another upkeep phase. The idea I think here is just that you have an upkeep phase before a bulk of your turn happens and one after the bulk of your turn happens, so you can have interesting game interactions due to both of those things being at different points in a turn, I, I guess. And just like every other phase in the game, both players can use quick play spells, traps, and quick effects. Not to get too far into strategy, because we, we don't really care about that for this video, but it might seem weird to a newer player why your opponent would be doing anything at the very end of your turn, when like there was plenty of turn before that to use their trap cards, quick play spells, and quick effects. And the, the top level, bare bones, only strategy we're getting into for the video is that at this point in the turn, your opponent has exhausted most of their resources, they don't have many things left to them, they have limited options, so my, now might be a good time to hit them with some stuff because they, they might not be able to respond to it as well. Like, had you done it during your their like main phase or something? Again, it's strategy. I just know that the, the newbies are thinking like, but why would you ever want to do anything? All right, now that is a typical turn in Yu-Gi-Oh! However, there is one thing I want to go over before you guys move on to the next video, whenever that would come out, or if this you're watching this at a later date, in a bunch of row as one long lecture, is turn one. Turn one in Yu-Gi-Oh! is a bit different than the other turns in the game. For the most part, it progresses the same way as any other turn, but there is some small caveats that prevent the first turn player from doing certain things. In Yu-Gi-Oh!, both players start the duel with five cards in hand. Then you play a little, like, start of duel procedure minigame, like rolling a die or flipping a coin, and the winner of that minigame gets to decide who gets to go first and who gets to go second. Why you'd want to pick one or the other? Again, strategy. If you decide to go first, you are now considered the first turn player. Your turn proceeds like the rest of the video, except for two major caveats. One, during the draw phase of your first turn only, you don't get to draw a card from your deck. You still have the draw phase, you just don't get to draw during it. I, I know. You also cannot conduct your battle phase at the end of your main phase one. This makes sense though, I think intuitively, because your opponent hasn't even had a turn yet to put a monster on board, so it'd be, it would be really cheesy if you could just attack. This also means you don't get a main phase two because you can't have a battle phase, but I, I mean, that kind of goes without saying. Instead, once you're done with your first turn main phase setup, you just simply proceed to your end phase. After that, the player going second, starts normal turn progression on turn two. And then when it comes back to you as the turn three player, you can just do everything that they could have done. You are no longer beholden to the first turn uh, truncation. Trunk it, trunk it. All right, guys, that was a turn in Yu-Gi-Oh. I hope it was, uh, I, ho I hope it was at least educational, <laughs> the point of the video. It was a lot of information. Um, if you have to watch it twice, I don't feel bad. Like there's a lot here because a lot happens even in the phases where not a lot is supposed to really happen. <laughs> so let me know in the comments below what you guys think and I'm deciding whether or not I want to use uh, the next video to be how to read a card in Yu-Gi-Oh, which I think is very important, or start a series of videos that's like, what do you do with various types of monsters? What do you do with various types of spells? And like, what do you do with various types of traps? I'm not sure which one I want to start with yet. I think both are important before we get to like summoning conditions and more advanced card interactions like chains. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think of that. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta, you know, at least learn how to play the game. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling. Fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!